Hi, today we're going to cover scoring. First I'll explain exactly what normalized scoring is and why it's useful, then I'll cover how metric values are turned into scores, and finally I'll show how metric scores are rolled all the way up the tree. Scoring is actually pretty simple. Everything's given a score between 0 and 10 so that you can compare apples and oranges. So, for example, if your workplace injuries has a score of 8 and your customer service has a score of 2, you know exactly where to focus your energy. Now we'll get into the real meat of the lesson, how to turn metric values into scores. One of the most popular scoring types in the software is goal red flag scoring, and it's a great example to start with. Its scoring ranges are broken into three even pieces. Red is from 0 to 3 and a third, yellow is from 3 and a third to 6 and 2 thirds, and green is from 6 and 2 thirds to 10. Goal red flag scoring requires two thresholds for every metric. The first one, goal, is where your metric turns from yellow to green. So let's say I'm opening a lemonade stand and my goal is to make $90 per day or more. That's my goal. The other threshold we need is the red flag, where your metric turns from yellow to red. Let's also say that if I make less than $80 per day, I lose money. That's my red flag. Now the software has all the information it needs to build your metric. It sees that the yellow section spans from 80 to 90, which is $10. And since each section is the same size, it also knows that the red and green sections are $10 as well. And there we have it. If I make less than $70, my metric will have a score of 0. If I make more than $100, my metric will have a score of 10. And anything in between will have a score somewhere in the middle too. Now it's time for our first exercise. If I make $78 one day, what will my color and score be? Well, red is between $70 and $80, so $78 would fall on the higher end of red. And if you thought the score would be somewhere around 2.7, you're right. And that's scoring in a nutshell. You set thresholds when you create your metric, and then when you update your metric values, the software knows exactly how to color and score it. I'll cover another, a couple different scoring types, but it really doesn't get any more complicated than this. For example, in goal red flag scoring, what if I wanted to track a metric where higher values are worse, like defective parts? All you have to do is enter a goal that's less than your red flag and the software will automatically flip the colors. So for this example, I'll make my goal 8 and my red flag 13. The software does the rest. Another scoring type is three color scoring, which is exactly the same as goal red flag, except for that you enter all four thresholds instead of just two. This lets you create scoring ranges of different sizes. And just like three color scoring, there's two and four color scoring as well. One of the more interesting scoring types is stabilized scoring, and it's used for metrics when you don't want the value to be too high or too low. In this example, a value of 35 gets a perfect 10 score, and the further the value gets away from the middle, the closer the score gets to zero. There's even three color stabilized if you don't mind entering in all seven thresholds. The simplest scoring type is probably goal only. It only has one threshold, and when you create the metric, you say whether higher values are better or worse. Then, if you hit your goal, you get a 10. If you don't, you get a zero. Finally, there's yes-no metrics, and they look a lot like goal only. You tell the software whether yes is good or bad, and then it gives the metric either a zero or 10 score. There are a few other scoring types, but they're really the same. You set thresholds, update metric values, and then the software gives the metric a score between 0 and 10. So the hard part's out of the way. We're tracking all kinds of metrics, and now they have scores. If you take a look at this tree, you can see where we're at. All the colored nodes at the bottom are metrics. But what about the nodes above the metrics? Well, if you're doing balanced scorecards, they're probably perspectives and objectives. And if you're just tracking metrics, then they might be generic nodes that group similar metrics. Whatever they are, though, they're going to need scores, too. Non-metrics are scored by taking a weighted average of their children's scores. Here's an example to show you what I'm talking about. By default, all nodes are weighted equally, like these first ones. Here, scores 2 and 8 roll up to 5. This other branch is a little different, though. The node with a score of 8 is weighted 9 times as much as its sibling. That means that their scores roll up to 7.4. Once these scores are calculated, the software continues to roll up the scores, node by node, all the way up the tree. And that's all there is to scoring. It's about setting thresholds, updating your metric values, and then rolling everything up. 